channel. Today, we are talking about Medellin, Colombia. I just spent a little over a month here and I have so much to share about why I think this city might just be the number one city for digital nomads. So if you're a remote worker, an expat, or even someone looking to travel to Colombia, this video will surely help you decide if Medellin is going to be your next destination. And I assure you after this video, it will be. Okay, so let's just get this part out of the way. Medellin used to be one of the most dangerous cities in the world in the 80s and the 90s because of the narco crime and its infamous leader that I'm sure we all know, Pablo Escobar. However, being as that was 20 to 30 years ago, it's drastically changed and gone through an incredible transformational period. So much so that in 2013, Medellin won the most innovative city of the year, beating out Tel Aviv and New York. So despite having lived through all these very dark and violent times, Medellin has become a city filled with life, good infrastructure and constant innovation that has really contributed to its success as a city. I felt safe throughout my time here, which is why I would recommend it to you, so long as you take the usual precautions. So I was made aware that there is petty theft and crime here, so I always paid attention to my bags. And especially as a creator with a camera, I also never kept my camera or my phone out. Every time I used my camera, I would put it immediately back in my bag and hold my bag here. Every time I used my phone, I would immediately put it back in my bag. And I would recommend that you just you know, take those kind of precautions as well. And always stay in busy areas, especially at nighttime, don't linger in dark and lonely alleyways. So anyway, since remote work is becoming more common and much more possible these days, I would say that some of the biggest digital nomad cities are in Asia, like Bali or Chiang Mai. So both of these locations are cheap living, really fresh food, beautiful landscapes, and these are the biggest attractions for digital nomads, right? But Medellin has just as much appeal as both of these locations, with an added bonus of being in a favorable time zone for North Americans. So picture this, you're walking through a city with high rise buildings, trendy cafes, bars and restaurants to your left and right, and you are also surrounded by massive trees, green and lush walkways, rivers and streams that are rushing by you as you cross the street, flowers are blooming everywhere, the weather is a pleasant and perfect 27 degrees all year round, you have views from all over the city with the backdrop of rolling green hills and a sky that never looks the same. And it's just as beautiful at nighttime when the city lights up. So now the big question, where should you stay in Medellin? What is the best area to get set up as a digital nomad or an expat or a traveler? Part of what makes Medellin so attractive is you get good value for money. But whether a place can be cheap or expensive is pretty subjective. It always depends on how much you're willing to spend. There are varying options for places to stay from some really cheap to some being really high end. But here are the differences. You can find really quality places to live in the best neighborhoods and the best areas for much, much less than you would, let's say, in Europe or the US. There are a ton of places to live in Medellin, but as a digital nomad, there are places that stand out and offer everything you need to live and work in comfort and in style, with conveniences all within walking distance. The most popular areas for nomads to live are in El Poblado, Laureles, and Envigado. Laureles is the most affordable of the three. El Poblado is within range for digital nomads on a budget, and Envigado is the most expensive. If you were to find a room in a shared apartment, it could cost around $300 a month. If you have more of an available budget, you can find find a really nice, luxurious apartment with stunning views all over the city, a doorman and security for around a thousand a month. And we're talking like luxurious for a thousand a month. I stayed in an area just above the neighborhood El Poblado and it was up the hill. So it was a pretty good walk every day. I shared this very spacious one bedroom that I'm in right now with my boyfriend. And this place has all the household amenities that we needed and stunning views. This place cost us $2,300 a month. This is definitely on the higher end of course, but since we spend most of our time living and working in the same place, we have a high higher budget for our live and work in space. So these areas, El Poblado, Laureles, and Envigado have a ton of co-working spaces, but there also are a lot throughout the city. While I didn't work at any co-working spaces, they are really easy to find if you just type in your search browser, 
co-working spaces in this particular neighborhood. I think staying in El Poblado would be the best area for remote workers, especially if it's your first time in Medellin. It's trendy, full of working cafes with free Wi-Fi, and the Wi-Fi is always reliable. The accommodations here are great and easy to find. I used Airbnb, but I almost exclusively use Airbnb. I've tried many of the other competitor sites and I always find the best deals, the best customer service, also really incredible insurance and just the user experience in general. Personally, I think is best on Airbnb. But if you wanna do a little bit more research and not pay that extra 3% that Airbnb charges, just easily go into your search browser and type in Medellin apartment rentals. And there really are a bunch of sites that come up. You can easily find a place that is relatively quiet, but is also an easy walking distance to all the action. In terms of food and drink, it is bars and restaurants galore in El Poblado. There are so many local eateries called Cervezas, oh my God, this word is so hard for me, Cervezerias. And these are kind of like cheap local establishments. And these places are interspersed with high-end restaurants, a lot of outdoor restaurants, coffee shops and cafes, dessert bars, rooftop bars, a ton of nightclubs here. There is really something for everyone in El Poblado. Similar to the cost of accommodations, the cost of food and drink varies between insanely inexpensive to upscale, but you can find really good food here for much less comparatively to the US. So for example, in some high-end restaurants, for a full dinner, including appetizers and drinks, it cost me about $25 total. Food is somewhat cheap in grocery stores and supermarkets. Produce and vegetables are much cheaper in the local farmer's market, which is personally where I really like to shop. And in my last video, I went to the local farmer's market. So if you're interested here in Medellin, the one that I went to is called Plaza Mayorista. And just check out the video here, it's linked right here. So this is the Carulla or the supermarket that I just walked right down the street to. And I come here to get the staples. So they do have all kinds of options here. I go with the local milk right here. It's kind of interesting, but you buy milk out of a plastic bag. Bag of milk costs 7,000 pesos. That is about two US dollars. I get this, uh, bag of coffee here. Colombia's world famous local coffee costs 15,000 pesos, which I think is about four US dollars. So this whole carton of 30 eggs, this costs 14,000 pesos. It's like $3.50 for 30 eggs. The stick of butter costs about a little bit over a dollar. A six pack of Colombia's finest Club Colombia beer cost 12,000 pesos, which is about $3.25. A loaf of freshly baked bread here is about 4,000 pesos. That is a little bit over a dollar. So you can really see how cheap the cost of food is here. So a bag of groceries that would last me about 10 to 14 days might cost me like $10. If you are a digital nomad watching this, then you know that this lifestyle can get a bit lonely and feel a bit isolating. So it might be helpful for you to look for places with big nomad communities. If you walk into any coffee shops or, or co-working spaces and just ask about the social events, they usually have meetups or some sort of like networking social events. Personally, for me, a large digital nomad community in a city isn't that important. However, I do enjoy the networking and the social aspect of being around other entrepreneurs. Also, just in general, getting a little bit more involved in your digital nomad community wherever you are could help in growing a new enterprise or just finding new business opportunities or making new friends. So during the week, I was mostly staying here in my apartment, working, cooking. I went out to dinner also quite a few more times than I usually do just because the cost is so much more affordable than being back at home in the US. On the weekends was when I did most of my exploring and traveling around the country or even around this region. So I pretty much filled my weekend with activities, which here in Medellin, you're never going to be short of doing anything. There are just so many things to do outdoors. There's so much art and cultural activities here. So I kept myself really busy the whole month I was here. If you have even just one day here in Medellin, there are a ton of different experiences, sightseeing, just so many different pockets of neighborhoods here in Medellin that you can explore. Dancing is a main part of Colombian culture, so I took a few dancing lessons, uh, salsa lessons and bachata lessons uh, with my friend Jonathan, which you may have also seen in my last video, which I'll link here again. 
What I also love about Medellin is it's very park oriented. So I walked around a lot, always having my book in my backpack. And I took a lot of like Ubers and taxis too, to just different parks around the city, which have, there's some parks that just have stunning views too. And you could just go there and relax for a little while. I also visited a few art museums, one particular one that's called the Antioquia Museum that features the art of Fernando Botero, which you may have seen before. He's the most famous artist from Colombia and he's still alive and he paints large fat people. One weekend I took a 45 minute plane ride from here Medellin to Cartagena, which is a city on the Caribbean coast. And I stayed at this beautiful hotel called Casa San Agustin inside the old fortified walled city. And I just hung out at the hotel, ate as much food as I could and made my way around the city by visiting all of the rooftop restaurants. Last weekend, I took a quick trip to Guatapé, which is just an hour, maybe two hours outside of the Medellin area. We went there to go hiking and sightseeing. It's this gorgeous lake region with a giant rock that everyone goes to climb to see the views. Getting around in Medellin is really easy. There are taxis everywhere and they're also economical. I would take a taxi to the local farmer's market. It was about a 15 minute ride and it cost me six US dollars one way. Uber is also available here, which makes everything getting around really easy, especially if you don't speak any Spanish. There's also a metro system here that is really efficient. It goes from one side of the city all the way to the other. It's just one line. And a ticket for the metro costs about 3,000 pesos, which is less than a dollar. I think it's about 80 cents or so. When you factor in all that this city and, and everything that this country has to offer, including the cost of living, it's easy to understand why so many digital nomads arrive here and stay much longer than they intended. Affordability is key. And I think Medellin is just a really perfect combination of South American culture while also enjoying a lot of comfort and good infrastructure for living and working remotely. I hope this video helped you make a decision whether or not Medellin is right for you. If you have any specific questions or want to know more, just drop a comment down below and I'll respond with as much as I know and as much as I can help. Thank you all so much for being here. Let me know what you thought about this video, if it really was helpful for you. And if you guys have any recommendations on where I should go next and where I should be reporting on next in terms of the digital nomad community and the remote work life, let me know again in the comments below. And also come say hi to me on Instagram. I post much more obviously in current time on Instagram. So drop a DM, come say hi. Until next time, take on the world.